This channel hasn't had the best luck when it comes to reviewing the Rio Grande in particular. The first such example was failing to recognize Sam Lewis and Rio Grande 1744 in the 2022 Lionel Volume 2 catalog, and more infamously with a recent episode of Train Facts where I erroneously claimed the K-37 class as rebuilt from the C-41s, a claim which got so much backlash that I made a follow-up video addressing the matter only hours later. To make up for these Rio Grande related errors, I've decided to cover a Rio Grande engine that I've been looking into for quite some time, specifically a one-of-a-kind double fairly that's one of the most hated engines by Rio Grande historians, such as Railroad's online developer Heiss, who initially brought light to my C41 rebuild error. But while researching this little-known engine, I stumbled upon another double fairly that traveled from one American Railroad to another, and I figured it would only be fair to combine these two little-known engines into one grand episode. With that said, it's time to right the wrongs against the Rio Grande once and for all, while giving the recognition these hated yet overlooked engines deserve, as we look into America's only double fairlies. The world has seen a wide variety of steam locomotive designs during the first century of their existence, ranging from boiler tubing to wheel arrangements in order to maximize speed, strength, or efficiency. Likewise, it would only make sense that Britain, the birthplace of the locomotive, will create a large number of these experimental designs themselves, with one of which being a double-ended steam engine with a continuous boiler and small articulated wheelbase. Such an odd design was patented by Scottish engineer Robert Francis Fairley in 1864, as the newest innovation in locomotive design would be known as the Double Fairley. Although technically not the first of its kind, the most well-known of these engines will be built five years later for the Festiniong Railway in Wales, which was named Little Wonder to showcase the success of the new double-ended design. Little Wonder was quickly placed on a number of trial runs for the workers and engineers alike to witness, which also happened to include one General William Jackson Palmer, a civil engineer who was about to establish the Denver Rio Grande Western Railway in Colorado. At the time, Palmer was considering narrow-gauge trackage for the new rail line in order to navigate through tight turns and steep grades in the Colorado Rocky Mountains, and an engine as strong as a double fairly was just the kind of engine that Palmer was looking for. Impressed by the railroad's demonstration runs, he placed an order with the British Vulcan Foundry in 1873 to import an engine similar to Fairley's Little Wonder to the US, with this engine being designated to Class 62, it was number 13 and named Mountaineer on one end, and Fairley patent on the other. This 0440 engine arrived in the States with a Welsh engineer to explain the operations of the unusual engine to engineers who are more used to traditional, single-ended steam engines. However, the double fairly design unsurprisingly proved to be relatively unpopular among drivers, as a continuous boiler separated the driver and fireman, resulting in all the controls on the driver's side, and two small firebox doors for the fireman to shovel coal into two fireboxes. Furthermore, based on its relatively small design, the double fairly had little room for coal and water, so the Rio Grande extended the coal bunkers on Mountaineer and later added an auxiliary tender to hold more water, as the engine was also renumbered to 101. Yet, the engine was also known to ride very roughly due to the lack of trailing wheels, an essential part of the double fairly design meant to increase tractive effort, as the flaws of the Mountaineer and other engines of its kind were starting to outweigh the benefits. The last known use of this engine was during the Royal Gorge War, where it transported Rio Grande troops who tried to gain trackage rights in the Royal Gorge, but little is known about this engine afterwards, as it was taken out of service in 1883 and was scrapped five years later. Although the Double Fairly is considered a little-used oddity by some, the Little Wonder trials impressed a surprisingly large number of customers from around the world, with a second example also being utilized in the U.S. based on the success of the trial runs. However, instead of being imported from a British manufacturer, William Mason of the Mason Machine Works of Taunton, Massachusetts built his own Double Fairly in-house in 1871, thus being the first true Double Fairly to be constructed outside of its home nation in Britain. Numbered 438, this engine was also one of the first to be built for standard gauge and employed a larger 0660 wheel arrangement. The locomotive was intended to run on the Central Pacific Railway, but the engine was soon sent back due to more modern and practical engines arriving at the same time, with the engine then performing trial runs on the Boston and Albany Railroad before finally finding a home on the Lehigh Valley, who numbered it 164 and named it Janus, after the two-headed Roman god of beginnings and transitions. Here, the engine gained mixed reviews as its strength limited the engine to helper service for pushing freights up steep grades, 
Although, one person who didn't like the engine as much was Alexander Mitchell, the Lehigh Valley's general superintendent, who complained of leaking steam pipes only a year after Janus arrived on the railroad. Needless to say, this engine didn't last for long either, as the unique standard gauge double Fairly was off the roster by 1877, with the engine having two conflicting reports of its fate. One report claims that the remains of the engine was split into two separate 060 switchers, while another claims that the engine was wrecked with its boilers converted for stationary use at Per Amboy, with some sources stating the latter reports as likely true. However, the fate of the double Fairly would be sealed soon after its construction, as an improved single Fairly design was being trialed on the Great South and Western Railway in Ireland, with Mason soon following this design with their more famous Mason Bogey, which would be sold to hundreds of rails across the U.S. But in the end, Janus represents the duality of everything in life by containing things both good and bad. No one engine is built without both improvements and problems when compared to their predecessors, as even the more successful replacements for the double Fairleys weren't without flaws. As hated as they may be by modern historians, these two remarkable engines still go down in history, not only being one of the most unusual locomotives run on American rails, but indirectly one of the most influential by starting a new era in steam locomotive design. Thank you all for watching this episode of Remarkable Engines. As double-ended steam locomotives, the double Fairleys were also ahead of their time as early predecessors to modern double-ended diesels and electrics, a trend that ironically didn't catch on in the US either, but is the backbone of most new engines in Europe and beyond. Although double Fairleys never saw widespread success on the vast American rail network, they did see success in neighboring Canada on the Grand Trunk Western, and more notably in Mexico on Ferro Civil Mexicano. Furthermore, these two engines not only indirectly started the articulated craze of the late 1800s, but in the case of Janus specifically, it led to the development of the popular Mason Bogey type of engines, thus proving the two Fairleys as unknown as catalysts for the greater evolution of American steam engines. Thank you again for watching, credit for all the photos used go to their respective photographers, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Have a good day.